Today we will be showing you how to replace an IBM 3572 tape library. This replacement will require downtime and should be scheduled with the system administrator. Since this is a full library replacement with the drive already inside the tape library, this will cover all versions of the 3572, regardless of what style drive is inside. There are a few reasons that you may decide you need a replacement 3572. The library may be completely dead. You may have repeated drive errors with multiple different cartridges. Or, you may have an issue where the picker assembly isn't pulling or putting tapes from the magazine or drive correctly. If any of these issues is occurring, you will need to replace the library. It should be noted that this video will not be covering the disassembly and replacement of just the tape drive inside the 3572. This is a depot level repair only. If you purchased a replacement 3572 from the Rocket Platform website, it will already come fully assembled with the tape drive inside it. All you will need to move over from the faulty unit is your tape cartridges. The first thing you will need to do prior to performing the library replacement is to remove all of the tape cartridges from the library. If the library is still able to be powered on, you will first want to check if there is a tape in the drive. If there is, please use the front panel commands to move the tape from the drive to a magazine slot. If the library is either completely dead, or the front panel commands fail when trying to move the tape from the drive, please open a ticket through the Rocket Plus customer portal. Once the drive is empty, you will now need to remove the magazine and remove all tapes from it. If the library is still powered on, use the front panel to perform an eject command of the magazine. If the command is successful, the magazine will unlock and you will be able to pull it all the way out. If the command is unsuccessful, or if the library cannot be powered on, you will need to manually unlock the magazine. This process is done by using a small paper clip that is straightened out. You will see a small hole to the left of the operator panel. If you slide the paper clip into that hole, you will feel it meet some resistance as it pushes against the magazine lock. If you push the paper clip in as far as it will go, it will trip the magazine lock, and while you are holding the paper clip in place, you can pull the magazine straight back and out of the library. Now that you have your magazine out of the library, please remove all tapes from the magazine. This will include both the inner and outer rows of tapes, the latter of which will slide forward once the inner tape in each column has been removed. Please ensure that the magazine is completely empty before reinserting it into the library. Once all tapes are removed from the library, you will need to retrieve your unique settings from the library before powering it down. This will include the network settings, which allow access to the web GUI of the library. If your library is completely dead, you will need to set up the replacement from scratch. This may require contacting the system administrator to get the appropriate network settings for the library. When all relevant settings are obtained, you will need to prepare the library for shipment. This will attempt to put the picker assembly into the proper place for the picker lock to be installed so that the library can be safely removed from your rack. Please use the front panel commands to do this. Depending on the library, the instructions on the front panel may unlock the magazine and instruct you to remove all tapes. You should have already done this from the previous steps, so you can feel free to just pull the magazine out slightly and then push it back in until it locks. The library will now move the picker to the rear and will inform you via the operator panel that it is ready to be locked and powered down. Now you will need to go around to the rear of the library and first flip the power switch to the off position. Then, unplug the power, ethernet, and interface cables from the rear of the library. Finally, install the shipping lock thumb screw that should be on the rear of your library. Your library may have rack mount ears installed that secure the library into the rack. If this is the case, you will need to undo the screws that hold the rack mount ears to the rack in order to prepare the library for removal. Once ready, your library can now be pulled straight back and out of the rack and set to the side. You can then take your replacement library and slide it into the rack and secure the rack mount ears if they are present. Go around to the rear of the library and first make sure that the power switch is in the off position. Then install the ethernet, interface, and power cables into the rear of the library. Finally, you need to ensure that the picker shipping lock thumb screw on the replacement library is completely undone before powering on the library. Failure to do so may cause irreparable damage to your library and void the warranty. Once the thumb screw is completely undone, you can flip the power switch to the on position and return to the front of the library. When the front operator panel shows the word ready, the library is now fully initialized. 
you will now need to go through the front panel and set your unique information, including the network settings. Once these settings are confirmed, you will need to reboot the library for all settings to take effect. You are now ready to load your tapes into the magazines of the library. Please use the eject command through the operator panel to eject the magazine and insert all tapes into the magazine slots before inserting the magazine back into the library. Then the library will inventory the magazine. Once all tapes are inserted and the library goes back to ready, the replacement is complete. You will now need to reconfigure your backup software to be able to use the replacement library. All backup software handles this process differently. For our purposes, since we use Semantic Backup Exec, we simply need to restart the services to allow the tape services to detect the replaced library. Your backup software procedure may be different. Any questions about backup software should be directed to your software support or manufacturer. If you have any issues with the library replacement or the library is not powering up properly, please open a ticket through the Rocket Plus customer portal. Thanks for watching. This has been another video by the Top 10 USA video production team. We look forward to sharing more content with you going forward, so please check out our YouTube channel and please subscribe so that you get notified whenever we release a new piece of content.